Good morning, um, good afternoon, and um, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to e Institute uh, webinar series. This webinar is um, about Edge Green Building Certification System. This is the first webinar of the series. Uh, we are very glad to see people from all around the world on, on this webinar. Uh, the webinar series will be on certification system by Edge, and the first one uh, that is today will be um, solely on um, software, how to use the software, but also I will explain um, the re online resources on Edge. By this, I'll try to give you an overview of um, the resources online, plus how to use the software, Edge software, and different tools on the Edge software. My name is um, Omid Saberi. I'm a green building specialist in World Bank Group, and I'm responsible for the technical side of Edge certification system. Uh, IFC is a private arm of World Bank group and we work with private sector to create jobs and develop the capacity both financially and technically. So what I'll do now, I'll start sharing my screen. Um, if uh, in future for you to get um, easy access to the software and the tools, uh, you can always type um, ifc.org slash edge. Uh, that's the easy access to uh, edge software. So what I'll do now, I'll share my screen and start explaining the process. Um, so what you can do in, to see the screen easier and while I'm then presenting the software, it's um, on your screen you have a small button to make the page fully screen. And by doing that, then you can see the fonts and everything much more clearer. So there's a small uh, arrow size on the corner that we can make the screen full screen. So first I want to start explaining um, what is Edge. Um, and maybe before that, it's more important to explain why, why we are doing this. Um, obviously, World Bank and IFC um, is mainly focused on the banking sector and, and private sector development. But you would probably ask why we are doing uh, certification um, and green building certification. We have seen in last few years a, a tremendous growth in the building sector, uh, mainly in Asia, in Africa, and in Latin America. And this growth has been um, very, very uh, quick in the building sector. And uh, you know, obviously, you are um, partly in the building sector, and you would see the the growth that are, are coming. But at the same time, um, you know, we have seen facts like 70% of India is, is still uh, to be built, and these kind of facts shows us an opportunity. Um, given that the on the other hand, we have a, a very small short window between now and 2050. Uh, that we need to change the climate change trend um, uh, by phasing out the fossil fuel. Um, putting these two facts to together, uh, there is a small opportunity window of opportunity for us to tackle the building sector and a, a resource efficiency. And to do that, um, you know, we worked on a, a tool that has been developed in last five, four to five years in IFC um, and uh, called Edge. So now we want to understand what is EDGE. EDGE basically stands for uh, excellence in design in greater efficiencies. Um, and th there is three elements on the EDGE that develops uh, basically the, uh, an ecosystem um, within which we'll be working toward uh, efficiency in buildings. And these elements, one, one of those is the software. Uh, which is an online application free of use uh, and available globally. We have a universal standard uh, that I will explain what it is and a certification system that will certify buildings for um, being green. Uh, these are the three main pillars of EDGE. Using uh, the, the software itself um, basically helps people to design their buildings 
Um, the design uh, element on the software is quite simple, so there is no much training required for that, and it's um, quite easy for everyone to pick that up uh, shortly. And also, it helps people to run the software in less than 20 or 30 minutes for each building. Um, and this gives a very specific ability to uh, users to verify their buildings quite quickly. Uh, I'll explain how how it works. The uh, standard that I mentioned uh, is 20, 20, 20, we call it. Um, and it means that we are um, tackling 20% energy reduction, 20% water reduction, and 20% embodied energy reduction. If one receives these three uh, savings, then can be certified for EDGE. But you would probably ask, what is the baseline for reduction? The baseline for reduction for each of these measures will be defined for each country separately, and for each building type. Um, the way that the baseline is defined is defined based on the climate conditions, based on the building type, but also in our target countries, we, are, we do a calibration, which means that we go to the uh, country, we study the current building technologies and current building regulations, and then build that into the database of information that then generates the baseline condition. And the baseline is a moving baseline, which means that if two years, three years down the line, there is more stringent requirements comes into the play, that baseline becomes more and more difficult. Um, and obviously, the 20% beyond the baseline would be always a pushing target uh, to move the, the uh, industry forward. You probably would ask that which, which building typologies are covered on the um, edge. Uh, we have five building typologies right now. We have hospitals. Um, that uh, includes general hospitals, private hospitals, um, and uh, clinics, so different sizes of uh, sizes and specialty of hospitals. We got um, offices, uh, which could be private um, or public offices, uh, little or large. Um, hotels, we have um, resorts and, and hotels. So that and also different stars rating between one to five stars. We've got um, retail. Um, spaces that are shopping malls, supermarkets, um, different types of uh, retail spaces. And, and finally, we have homes, uh, which um, includes apartments and single-family homes. So these are the current uh, building types. There was a question from one of the registrants about um, would we have uh, an edge for educational buildings. Uh, right now, we don't have that. Um, in future, we will be developing that. Um, we have seen less energy consumption, mainly in schools, um, because they normally don't use air conditioning systems or uh, a lot of energy consumption. That's why we have pushed it slightly back, but that may come in future. In terms of uh, which countries EDGE is covering, the countries that are covered on the edge right now is around 100 countries. Um, in 100 countries, we have um, more than 250 cities covered on the edge. can be selected by, by a drop-down menu. Um, in 100 countries, now we are selecting 10 um, countries to be our first um, target countries. Those countries are the ones that we are concentrating our, our work on. Um, we are also in process of um, having local, uh, local partners in the target countries so that they will offer certification in the target countries. But also, we would have global partners that will be certifying uh, EDGE globally. These are the two main elements that we are working on it right now. But also, there would be auditors that um, will be doing the audits and checks um, on site. Um, all these information, uh, I will share that more in next webinars. Um, so far, uh, we have uh, done certification for buildings, um, different types of buildings for office buildings, for residential, uh, for retail, and for hospitals. Uh, some of those case studies are available under the case studies. You can access them here. 
uh, under case studies. And then, then finally, I want to explain uh, the, the current resources online. There are three reports online that you can access, and there are more to come in, into this space shortly. Uh, the one, first one that I want to mention is the methodology report. Um, there are lots of questions normally comes in about how edge calculates and what are the calculation methodology behind. Um, that is what you can uh, access on the methodology report. Uh, in short, we are using a quasi steady state um, calculation methodology, which is not a, an hourly uh, calculation, but at the same time, it's not a generic calculation as well. This is the ISO, um, ISO 13,000. Uh, 17,790, it's always, I can't remember it's always. Uh, so 13,790 uh, and published in 2008. And that is um, the methodology that uh, European Union countries are using for building labeling system. But also UK uses the same methodology for EPC, uh, energy performance certificates. Um, we are using the same methodology, but you can read more about that on the methodology report. Uh, there are also user guides for uh, different building types. Uh, right now, we have homes and hotels online, but uh, the other user guides will be online in the next uh, two months maximum. Uh, those user guides are the guides for certification. So once one has finished the assessment, they can use these user guides for certifying their buildings. Um, now I move on to the software itself. Um, and run a few examples for you. Uh, so the, the way to access the software is, um, I'll, I'll go back to, to here, and then from here, I'll show you how to access it. So basically, what you can do is, um, on the ifc.org slash edge, you can click on uh, go to edge software, and this will take you to another uh, basically URL that through here you have three options. Everyone can access this just by um, their email address. So there is no registration fee or there is nothing uh, that one should pay. Um, only by your email address you can uh, connect. When you click on create a new project, um, it takes you to a page that has five building types here on the top, like folders. You can click through these folders and change the building type if you wish. Um, it's very uh, simple to switch between the building types, um, but also you can work on several buildings at the same time. Let me start with a hotel building. Um, I'll start with a hotel. I'll select Lebanon because we were in Lebanon last week and there was uh, very good developments in Lebanon on green buildings. So uh, we'll select Lebanon. Um, the city in Lebanon is Beirut. Um, I'll create and um, I'll select this climate type as temperate for uh, Lebanon. Um, you can select the um, star rating. Let's assume we are going to design a five-star hotel in Lebanon. The type of the hotel can be selected as hotel or resort. I'll keep the hotel. Uh, occupancy rate is um, the average occupancy of the hotel. And it is 70. I'll assume it's 80%. Uh, in terms of the uh, facilities in the hotel, um, let's assume that it has a swimming pool. It has a health a spa. There is a breakfast area, no restaurant. No, there is a restaurant in this hotel. Um, there is a banquet and conference facility. And there is in-house laundry. And the, there is no irrigation area. So you can change this by just clicking or unclicking them. Floors above the ground, let's assume that it's seven stories above the ground. And there is no below ground. Uh, let's assume there is one below, below ground story. Number of rooms, you can change it. Let's say there are 200 rooms in this hotel. 
and you can notice that these percentages and areas will change by changing these elements. So you can also enter the guest room and all the area breakdown manually if you have the details. If you don't have the details, you can use the default values as they are without entering anything. So all the default value will be calculated if you don't enter any value into the user entry field. And in terms of air conditioning and space heating, um, we assume that there is a air conditioning and there is a space heating in the in Lebanon. The fuel use for uh, electric generator, uh, we assume it's diesel, but the percentage that is used from diesel, uh, let's say it's 50%. There are some power cuts in Lebanon, so they use diesel generator quite a lot. We assume 50% will be used uh, by generator. But then you can change the fuel used for hot water generation. We'll change it to diesel. Fuel used for <clears throat> cooking, uh, we assume natural gas. And for space heating, we assume, um, again, diesel. The rest of the assumptions, you can leave them as they are. <clears throat> if you have the costs data, like the cost of electricity, um, cost of diesel or gas or water, you can enter them here. But otherwise, you can leave them blank if you don't have the exact numbers. These numbers ha has been collected based on um, resources from dif <coughs> different countries. Um, but you can leave them, or if you have the exact detail, you can enter them. You may um, ask why, why these numbers are here, right? Roof U value or glass solar sort of heat gain coefficient. What we would suggest is to leave them as they are because these are the country base case conditions. And um, the reason we keep them open is that, for example, if um, one sees that in a specific city there is a regulation on uh, insulation of the roof or a wall, they can change that here by saying that, OK, the new regulation on the roof U value is 0.7. Apologies. 0.7. So then the baseline will be adjusted based on this. But remember that these are the baseline uh, assumptions. And if one changes this, then they need to uh, bring the facts why they have changed this. If there is a regulation, then that regulation needs to be presented uh, why the baseline is changing. So this is not your building. This is the baseline building. And there are uh, elements on the climate. Uh, so one, if once, can change the temperatures if they feel that these temp average temperatures are not correct. Or if there is a city that is not in the tool and you have a city similar to that, but the temperatures of your city is slightly different, so you can enter the average monthly temperatures here under the monthly temperatures. Otherwise, you can leave them blank. Um, in terms of the cooling and heating system, again, I would not change them. We will leave them as ASHRAE-based case. And what it means, it means that it uses different cooling types and heating types depending on the building size. So if you have a very small building, then that small building would normally use um, a DX system for cooling. And then if you move on to a very large uh, facility, it probably uses air-cooled or water-cooled chiller. And it will be done by itself, so you don't need to change that. So we'll keep that 0.7 for the roof U value. This is all we need to set up the, the baseline. Obviously, in a real project, you need to enter also the project details, like uh, project name and, and more details here. By doing that, then you can move on to the energy section. On the energy section, uh, we have 0% saving now. There is no saving. This bar shows the baseline condition. So the baseline is 369 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. That's the baseline for Beirut, for, for Lebanon, for that type of hotel with the size that we mentioned here, with the number of rooms. And this is the 
your building basically your improved case is the building that you have designed but right now we haven't selected any efficiency measure that's why baseline and improved line improved case are the same now let's start playing with the efficiency measures we start with the reduced window to wall ratio uh, let's say that our hotel is has only 30 percent window to wall ratio uh, the default is 40%, but I'll enter here 30% as the percentage of my hotel windows. Um, this gives me 2.6% saving on energy. Interesting enough that this saves me $109,000 in the cost of building. Obviously, the reason for it is that window is more expensive than a wall. And if you have more glazing, the cost would be higher. If you reduce your glazing, there would be a saving on, on your um, cost. So there is a saving on your energy and there is a saving on your cost. Now, let's assume that we are going to insulate the roof and we are going to insulate the uh, walls. And the U values are predefined here, but I'm going to change my U value to 0.2 in the roof and on the wall I leave the same uh, U value. Now I'm saving 4% uh, on the energy. I'm going to use double glazing, um, double glazed with um, a good U value and good solar heat gain coefficient. It gives me 5.8% saving. I need to reach 20%. So I'll move on to the lighting. Um, I'll use uh, energy saving light bulbs in internal and external and back of, back of house um, but also I'll include uh, lighting controls for my corridors. Now I have 17.4% saving. What else I can do? So let's look at the heat recovery. So uh, I would like to include uh, sorry, maybe the better option is to uh, use an air cool, a water cool chiller. I'll go for a water cool chiller. Um, this gives me 20.7% saving. And now I'm meeting the edge uh, requirements. Going back to the cost, now I can see the cost increase for me is um, almost $200,000. Um, it gives me the payback in one year. So the savings that I get will recover this cost in one year. And it's a very powerful tool for you to talk to your clients and say, listen, you can spend this money, but you can uh, that, that savings that you get is only one year. And it's quite powerful from that point of view. You can also go and change. Let's say I don't want to insulate my wall and roof. And I don't want to use double glazing. Now I get 18%. But I want to use solar hot water for my um, hot water demand. I'm getting 31% saving, more savings. My cost is reduced. My cost is $186,000. And the payback is reduced to 0.7 years. So you can pick and choose the options that gives you the best cost and best saving. So you can. Maybe instead of water cool chiller, I go with air cool chiller. The saving is 28%. The cost is reduced to 68,000, and payback is only 0.3 years. <clears throat> so based on the different options available here, and the cost and payback, you can easily switch between the options and get what is best for your project, a specific project, and what is the best payback. There's other elements here about uh, the cost. Utility cost per month is $75,000, and, <clears throat> and the cost reduction is $20,000. So you can see that um, you can also see the monthly reduction here, uh, which is the bottom line for the clients. I, I now on, we move on to, to water. Uh, I use low floor shower heads with the same logic. Um, all, I use low floor facets and dual flush toilets. And also I use the water efficient urinals. And this gives me 21% saving here. 
But one thing that you probably noticed is if I click this, uh, my saving is 29% on energy. But if I select this, saving on energy will be increased. So it means that if I save on my hot water, I save on my energy. And that saving has been captured because all of these elements are interlinked. There was another question about if I change my materials, would my energy change? Answer is yes. <clears throat> if you change your external walls or roof, um, the U value will change and that will impact your energy. Uh, so all, all of these are interlinked. I'll move on to materials. Um, uh, instead of um, the reinforced concrete, I'm going to use a filler slab. Filler slab means that using less concrete in the slabs uh, for the floor, and I'll use it for roof construction. Only with these two, I get 25% on my embodied energy. <clears throat> this means that um, with these three elements, now all these tabs are green. My project now meets edge requirements because I have uh, materials, energy, and water reductions here. You can um, easily save your project. You can download a PDF of this project and send it to anyone you wish. Uh, quickly, I would like to, I know that we are running out of time, but what I'll show you is two elements that I think is important for you to know. One is that instead of clicking on these clicks, you can click on the measure itself. Let's say I'll click on the high performance glass. Then it gives me more information about the glass. But also you can go to the user guide and read what requirements you need to do for meeting uh, the certification on the glazing. To be certified, you all, all you need to submit is the clicks that you have done. So uh, only for these clicks you can uh, submit the documentations and get the uh, certification for uh, for edge um, here I stop um, we are on time for uh, for uh, questions we have few questions for you we want you to answer those questions and then um, there would be open uh, questions and answers so here I move to the questions All right, the first question that we have here um, is, and I want you to please and answer, um, vote and answer the, the questions. So what are the building types covered in EDGE? The first one is homes, hotels, schools, retail, and hospital. The second one is homes, hotels, office, retail, and hospital. The third one is home, schools, industrial buildings, retail, and hospital. The last one is hotels, schools, offices, retail, and hospital. So you can take a few minutes and, and answer these questions. Um, so great, um, 43 people has voted option B, um, which is the correct option. We have homes, uh, hotels, office, retail, and hospital in edge. Uh, that's correct. We move on to the next question. So um, who is not the target user of edge? Um, so we want to understand what do you think about um, who is not the target user for, for Edge. Computer engineers, uh, building designers, dev developers, and bank staff. Uh, 
Fantastic. Thank you for your answers. Um, yes, you, we received 67% uh, computer engineers, but it seems like that there is a bit of confusion about bank staff. Yes, bank staff, you may think that bank staff has nothing to do with edge and building certification system. But it's important for us to explain that why uh, bank staff are also part of our audience. Um, we are working with banking sector in different countries. Um, maybe I shouldn't say which countries right now because we have not finalized them yet. But we are working with the banking sector to unlend to green buildings. And for them to unlearn to green buildings, they need to understand what is the system. Um, for example, we want um, edge to become um, an eligibility criteria for uh, better rates on mortgages and better rates on the loans. So banking system also needs to understand how edge works and recognize the edge cert certificate. That's part of our work right now. We are working with them to First, have the edge as eligibility criteria for um, green loans, and then, then second, to use um, edge certificate in this process. Um, but it's true, um, our target is not computer engineers. We are not um, serving that, that uh, community. Uh, moving on to this next question. So the question is that what makes EDGE different from other certification systems? The first one is EDGE is an efficient resource efficiency certification system. The second answer is EDGE is only available to five building types. The third answer is um, EDGE serves 100 countries. Um, the Four uh, uh, answer is edge verifies the indoor air quality, energy, water, and materials. Fantastic. Um, thanks, thanks for answering the question. Um, it's very interesting the way that um, you, you see the answers. Uh, so the answer is right, is number um, one, uh, A, Edge is resource, an efficient resource efficiency certification system. What it means, it means that what we are trying to build here is a, an efficient process rather than, uh, you know, it's a very, very efficient process to become uh, an efficient building. Obviously, there are lots of green buildings um, and lots of, you know, processes that are happening, but sometimes those processes are quite inefficient and there, there is a long uh, process to go through. Um, what we're trying to reach here is a very, very efficient system that delivers efficient buildings, and it's all about the bottom line and business case for, for our clients. Um, of, that's right that uh, EDGE is available in 100 countries and for five buildings, but So the first answer was more correct. Um, now we can move on to the questions. Um, I, I can see that there is a lot of questions coming in. Uh, so I don't think I would be able to answer all of these questions in the next few minutes, but I'll try to start and, and answer as many as, as I can. Um, and for the other questions, what we can do is uh, try to answer them through email. One email that you can always reach us is edge at ifc.org. It's very easy, edge at ifc.org, and through that uh, we can answer the questions. All right, uh, I'll start with the first question from Andrew Scott. Um, I think he's from South Africa and he's asking about um, how edge can measure against SANS um, 10400 in South Africa. I should apologize because I can't remember the exact um, sounds that we built into Edge. But if you uh, go to Homes and select South Africa, you can see the comments um, under the energy section that comes for sounds. If the if project is not meeting sounds requirements, then that will be 
uh, appeared as an alert. We have calibrated edge for South Africa, but happy to discuss more, um, Andrew, if you need more information about that. Uh, we already answered the question about um, edge um, available for educational buildings. Um, so there is another question that asks, are you calculating energy saving only for final energy or also for primary energy? Uh, right now, we are using only for fin uh, final energy, not for the primary energy on the edge. And again, that um, question is um, answered um, in more detail on the methodology report. Um, Holger uh, Rontage um, asked that question. I'm sorry, I, I probably don't um, pronounce the name correctly. There is another question from Khaled Al Jabi is asking for baseline assumptions. Uh, there are over 200 and 2,800 tariffs for homes. Um, and it is a sliding scale tariff. Does edge allow for this? Um, the answer is no. What we are using on the edge tariffs for baseline is an average cost for um, that building sector in a specific country. Uh, in future, we can do that. We can. Uh, start um, adding sliding tariffs, but uh, right now we don't have that on the edge. There is a question from Satish Komar um, asking how edge certification will be done for non-AC buildings, um, air, not air-conditioned buildings. That's a very good question. Um, edge will certify all buildings, um, either conditioned or non-conditioned. If your building is completely naturally ventilated and passive, the still edge can certify them. Uh, if you select no heating and no cooling, basically cooling and heating energy moves on to virtual energy, um, but still doing passive measures to reduce that will um, be recognized on the edge savings. So uh, the thermal comfort measures as virtual energy on the edge. Um, again, on the uh, methodology report, you can read more about that, and I'm happy to answer more detail on that if you wish. Um, okay, there is a question about what is uh, from Komar uh, Biplap about what is the plan for capacity development in India. Uh, we are now uh, working with a local partner um, at the final stages uh, to have a local partner based in India. And then the local partner will do training for auditors in India. And we are hoping to start certification in India in the second half of uh, this year, hopefully. Um, so there is a long question here from Roman. Uh, Roman, Roman. Uh, I'll read the question. How do you enter a zero value on uh, some inputs? When I try to exclude some inputs, Put zero, it always uses default values. Very, very good question. Thank you for bringing this up because everyone gets confused with this. Um, that is uh, right. On the edge, you cannot enter zero as a number because zero equals to no entry. So if you want to put any zero for any of the values, please use 0 0.0001, something like that. Um, that is close to zero, but unfortunately, you cannot enter zero for, for values. You can do it for the areas, you can do it for U values, or, or whatever that you want to change from a baseline to default value to, a, to your number, which is zero, then please use 0 0.000 and, and one. Roman, I hope I answered your question. Um, there's a question from uh, Saeed Bijari. Uh, he's asking, uh, will there be a building integrated renewable energy section in the future? Um, uh, yes. Um, obviously, the building integrated is captured under photovoltaic. Um, we, have, we don't have a, a wind um, option there. But you can also enter that data um, under PV. So the PV energy generation can be under either on, on site or off site that can be captured under uh, uh, under PV but we can also add another cell to in to have uh, other renewable energy sources as well 
uh, Ricardo is asking what is the money unit, dollars in the country, um, native money, or the country native money. So uh, we are, um, in the countries that we are calibrating, we are hoping to change the um, currencies to local currency. Uh, for example, in India, on the homes, if you go, you can see the currency is rupees. Uh, if you go to Peru, you, on the homes, you can see that uh, currency is the local currency in Peru. But this is a working progress. Uh, right now, most other countries are all under dollars. Um, Khaled is asking why incremental cost is not available for homes. Uh, yes, it is not currently available for homes, but it will be available in the next few months. We are working on the cost data uh, for, um, for homes right now. But I can explain two more things here, uh, maybe. How much time we have? Another 10 minutes. OK, we have uh, plenty of time. Uh, so the cost data um, and also the materials embodied energy data, these are the two elements that uh, now we are working on it. Uh, the cost data will be refreshed uh, completely um, in, in a matter of months or two. Um, we have. That, uh, that is being developed, um, and that is using the data globally from different, different countries. And it's very, very advanced model on cost. I think this is the first time such a cost model has been developed globally. Um, and then in future, we would gather the data from the projects and build into the cost data. So that cost data will be updated all the time. For the embodied energy of the Materials, we are also refreshing that data. Uh, the current data is on Bath University data. We are going to refresh that data as a global data. And we will be publishing those reports on the resources as well. You can then access those reports and use them if you wish. But then that will be built into the da database of EDGE. So um, Daniel, um, Weltsman is asking, um, what is the accuracy? What is the variation when comparing Edge to other software? Uh, obviously, Edge is not an energy modeling software. Um, in terms of accuracy, we'll get pr probably between 5 to 10 percent difference between Edge and other, other softwares. Um, but you should see the difference between the time that you spend on an energy modeling software that may take you, uh, let's say, uh, you know, one week to build a, an energy model um, versus uh, half an hour that you can do on edge. And we believe that this accuracy is, is good enough for us to, uh, you know, to move ahead with, with that. But we are working on it to um, make it more and more accurate um, as we are going forward. Chaitra is asking, does cost and payback uh, consider regional variations? Um, the cost and uh, payback right now um, considers the current, uh, let's say, electricity costs and water costs and diesel costs in each um, region. The cost of materials right now is not assuming a, a variation between the regions. But we believe that that's not a very big um, element. But the cost database, the new cost database that is coming uh, online, that will be having a level of regional variation built in. Um, but in future, then we will be calibrating the cost for each country that will give you more uh, accurate data for each country. And again, the reason we have the cost here, there is not, we are not a cost estimator. The reason is to understand the impact of different uh, measures on the cost and trying to give uh, an idea to the engineers and to the, uh, to the users, uh, to our clients, that what is the uh, cost impact of each element. Oh, I can't keep up with the questions. There are hundreds of questions. OK, uh, the next one is on embodied energy, um, are you using life cycle assessment? Uh, yes, we are using life cycle assessment for embodied energy. That's, that's correct. So let me answer another question. OK. Uh, 
so uh, there is a question about do U.S. Green Building Council or LEED recognize EDGE as a reference tool for prerequisites? Um, still, no. Uh, we don't have um, lead EDGE recognized by, by U.S. Green Building Council or LEED. Um, but that might be an option in future. Uh, we, are, we, have, we are very close, we have very close relationship with them and we are speaking with them on a weekly basis. Um, but the current uh, lead uh, does, uses energy modeling tools. Uh, maybe in future that will uh, change. Um, there is a question that is there any other time that this webinar will be held? Um, one thing that I would say, within 24 hours, this, this webinar will be online. Um, you can see the recording um, if you wish. But also, we will be, uh, if there is interest, we can run this in different time zones um, to serve um, East Asia as well better. Uh, so. So there's a question about if um, there's a certificate of attendance um, from Teleco, John uh, Fobo. Um, unfortunately, no, we are not uh, issuing certificate of um, attendance for this one. In future, once there are uh, auditor trainings, then you can attend the auditor trainings and become an auditor um, by taking the exam. We have another five minutes to go. Uh, okay. uh, there is a question about um, whether we can, from Helen Leach, uh, about how to integrate food um, crops built uh, to address food security, like roof gardens. It's an interesting question, um, and it's really important to answer that. Uh, the way that EDGE tries to work is try to focus on resources like energy, water, and, and again, embodied energy on materials. Deliberately, we are not looking at other elements like, you know, indoor air quality. We are not looking at, let's say, bicycle racks. We are not looking at um, communi community connections. Those elements are excluded from EDGE because we wanted to um, focus on a specific resource efficiency measures. Um, and, and we will, uh, and that's why you know roof gardens and those elements are excluded. However, you can build roof garden into edge as an energy saving measure. Um, that is possible. There is a question about uh, from Rosette uh, Sanatos about uh, for materials efficiency measures for wall insulation. I don't use any. Is there an option if you don't use any? Very, very interesting. For wall insulation, yes, um, of course. If you don't use um, any insulation, uh, on the energy section, if you don't click on um, insulation for wall or insulation for roof, it means that you are not using any insulation. And there is that option on the materials, but that option will not be active because you're insulate, you are not using insulation in wall or roof. So um, if you have zero, uh, you don't select insulation for roof or uh, wall, then uh, automatically there would be no insulation in, uh, and, and that selection is uh, redundant. Um, is there a restriction to teach edge software to university students? Um, Elias Robel is asking this question. There is no restriction. We love you guys to teach this software to university students. This is what we want to do. Uh, so if you are um, active in universities, please use this. Uh, students can use this for their projects quite easily. Uh, architecture students or engineering students, mechanical engineering students, they can use Edge software. And we love to have more um, active involvement from universities and academics. So that would be uh, lovely if we can get more. Um, all right, so three minutes more left. Um, will there be a financing options available for edge certified buildings um, from Khaled? Uh, 
we are working in different countries um, with governments and banks and trying to get that uh, up and running. It slightly also depends on uh, which country you are talking about. Um, but we we want to work toward that, that there would be a financing option for edge uh, certified buildings. That's our goal uh, to reach. Okay. Um, does So there is a question from Fra Francis uh, Retif, and if I pronounce his name correctly, does percentage improvement uh, scale up depending on the star rating targeted? The question, uh, the answer is yes. Um, if you change the star rating, the energy consumption will change, and your the percentage improvement would then change, but the baseline will change. So 2020 20, 20 will be a universal requirement. But when you change that um, star rating, uh, the baseline energy will change. The last question that I would answer is uh, uh, from Vanessa Manalang. Uh, she's asking, how will EDGE work with government on incentives to future antique um, developers to invest on green buildings? OK. Uh, yes, I, I already explained that we are working with governments to um, and with banking sector to introduce lower uh, mortgage rate and lower interest rates if if we can, um, and that obviously changes from country to country, and and it's not an easy task. But any help from everyone else would would be lovely. We also work with other financial institutions outside World Bank. Um, and hoping them to um, accept edge as their eligibility criteria, then that will be um, come to different countries um, as in as an in incentive. Um, thank you very much, everyone. It was really, really uh, great. And I hope we have you uh, back again on future. Thank you and goodbye bye.